Let's move on. You know, every Tuesday and Thursday on the Tom O'Brien Show, we are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is Ord-Oracle.com. We are looking forward to his analysis. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. So uh, let's, let's, let's take a look at uh, the S&Ps. You know, the market's kind of corrected here since, uh, what, middle of July or whatever. Market's pulled back. But I want to look at the bigger picture. This chart, chart number one, is the, uh, the bottom chart is the daily uh, SPY. And the top chart is the RSI 14 on the daily period. And all I want to point out on this, I marked times when the RSI was above 80 on a, on a daily, which is, uh, you can go back as far as you want. But every time it got above 80 and actually below 90, somewhere between 80 and 90, when the RSI got plus 80 but below 90, it was never the final high. The what RSI kind of measures momentum of the market. When it gets up, around, when it gets 80, as, as usually the market does pause, but it's never the last high. Uh, so this chart goes back to, to mid 2016. And I got two uh, squares on the SPY chart. And one of those squares is probably going to be pretty identical what's going on in the market right now. Uh, the market's flipped sideways since about mid-July. Uh, looks like to me we haven't found a low yet. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss that as time goes forward. But this sideways consolidation, my opinion, could last another month or two, possibly even October. But... Uh, August here starts, uh, what, Wednesday to, uh, or, uh, starts Thursday. And probably August is going to be a down month. I think September could be an up month, but October is probably going to be a down month. So we're going to see a lot of chop. And this choppiness may look like, uh, the square in 2020, uh, 2020, or that little square in 2017. I don't know which one it's going to be. Depends how deep we go here on this correction. Uh, but, Again, the bigger trend's up. We'll see new highs before the year end, but the new highs will probably come after October. But uh, we do have a timeout and an uptrend right now, but the bigger trend remains bullish. So I flip to uh, kind of chart two. Absolutely. All right, chart two, uh, the top window is the, uh, this is a weekly chart. But the top window is the weekly National Association of Active Investment Managers Exposure Index. And what this chart does is exposes what these, what the National Association of Active Investors are doing. When it gets up, up above 100%, in other words, 100% of their funds are along the market. Uh, the funds on July 1st got to 103.63%. In other words, they're on margin almost 4%. So the 100% plus 4% margin. And so every time that has happened, uh, I got some uh, red lines in there and, and actually kind of shaded pink areas times when that happened. Well, again, this happened on July 1st. That was kind of a warning that we're probably going to stall the rally, which it did. And so what, what do you expect now next? Well, I got kind of a pink circles on that chart, which is the top window. And those, what I'm trying to say is, once you get above 100% long in the market, then the market pulls back. What's the minimum you would expect previous times going back to, uh, this chart goes back to 2021, about mid-2021, but it at least gets back to 60% long uh, for them. Uh, uh, so what I'm saying is the current long exposure for this group right now is approximately about 75%. They need to get down to 60% or below or below before a bottom starts to form. So what this chart says, we haven't, we haven't had enough damage in the market. I got to put it that way. <laughs> uh, Sim is not right for a low here yet because the, these invest the active investment managers are still too bullish They're up around 75%. They need to get down 60% or, or, or below to get the cement right for the next rally to begin. How long will that take? I don't know. Uh, but it could take, you know, several more weeks, i put it that way. So um, this choppiness 
at least so far, uh, is is probably going to continue um, again for the next several weeks, probably the next even couple of couple of three months. So it's kind of the doldrums of the summer are kind right, of honest, right. the dog days. Way. So, uh, but here's that's one indicator. So that's the cement. This is kind of a cement indicator. It's not right for a bottom. And the next, uh, next uh, chart, chart number three, yeah. is uh, is kind of a panic chart. This is uh, it's sort of a sentiment, I guess you might say also. But I do a lot of stuff with the trend. And I do a lot of stuff with the ticks, but trend seems to work better. I, I even have a used to have a combination tick-trend ratio. Uh, but stock charts don't really uh, publish the, the ticks anymore, so I don't use that chart. But it would it was helpful. But anyhow, the the top window is a ten day trend of um, well, it's a ten day trend, and normally readings ab- above one point two show panic in the market. So a trend reading of one is neutral in market. Trend reading like down point nine is usually kind of bearish. People are getting too exuberant to the upside, and it gets above one point two. They're kind of a uh, starting to show fear in the market and that fear is always a good sign so you want to go into a market if the market's going down and there's no fear the market's going to keep down until you do get fear right. and this chart kind of defines how that that develops yeah perfect yeah, tim, the music yeah stay right so. there folks we'll be right back with tim ord of the ord oracle Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, we have Tim Ord on the line. You know, you hear a lot uh, when Tim Ord says this doesn't look like a bottom, this doesn't look like a top. If you ever want to like learn more about what he's saying when he says that, because it's it's really good stuff, I'd recommend going over to tfnn.com. You can go down to the services page right here. Scroll down a little bit, and we have two really stellar webinars from Tim Ord, The Secret Science of Market Tops, and then Six Ratios Every Trader Should Know. Uh, and that again is hosted by Tim Ord. Really recommend checking that out. Tim, before we went to break, we were looking at the uh, Stock Exchange Arms Index. Yeah. Uh, okay, we're back on uh, ch- uh, chart three. Anyhow, the top window basically is the 10 day average of the trend. And again, the trend of uh, 1.2 or higher is usually bullish. That shows more volume going into the down stocks, and that's showing uh, that shows fear. And the more fear you have, the more closer to a bottom you get. So, but a, a 10 day average, in other words, that's two weeks of trading of a average of 1.2 or higher. That, that's quite a bit of panic. And you actually have panic going in an uptrend, but uh, most of the time it forms at, at significant lows. But what I want to point out, the 10 day trend right now is 0.99, which is that uh, I got circled to the left far left there. Mm-hmm. And that's not even that's neutral market. So, you know, this is no sign of a panic at all so far in the market. So it'll it'll get panic, and uh, traders will feel it, and they'll show up in this trend reading. But right now, uh, you know, it's there's no sign of a worthwhile bottom for me here. Matter of fact, even on the two day two day trend, which is the bottom window. It also comes in right at neutral, 1.101. So even on a two-day, there's no trend or there's no panic. So no sign of a worthwhile bottom for me here, not saying the market's going to be up tomorrow or down tomorrow, but um, it's not giving any major sign. I guess if you're a trader, uh, you know, you might take a shot. But anyhow, let's, let's look at the real short-term picture. Let's go yeah. to chart four. So the bigger trend or uh, – we hit a high in, in the mid-July. That high is still in force to the downside. So in general, we expect the market to move forward or move down uh, to some point where we're going to have panic on the 10-day trend. It's going to get up around 1.2. Wherever that area is, that's when I'm going to start looking for a bottom. I don't know what time that's going to be, but the time will be when that trend gets above 1.2 on a 10-day average. But on a short-term basis here, uh, this is uh, just a daily SPY, and there's gaps all over the place. You know, we gap down from the July high. I got a little gap there on the chart, and we had another gap last week, and we had one. We had an actually up gap on Friday, and now we're coming back down and testing that gap today. Uh, so 
depends how a gap is tested, but that gap's going to be support. And I got some dotted blue lines on that chart. Shows you last Friday's gap up. I got a little gap sign printed in there. And now we're going into that gap today. So this gap will be support if it's 10% lighter volume or greater. And I don't have the, the volume on last Friday, but we got, you know, about 10 minutes to go in the market. And it looks like that gap's going to be tested on lighter volume. So probably, but the day's not over yet. A lot of times volume really comes in right on the close. And the SPY uh, trades tell about a quarter, does trade it until about a quarter after four uh, Eastern time. So yet we got about, uh, well, 15 plus 10, you have about 25 more minutes of trading on the SPY. So we may reach the volume we had last Friday. If it comes in equal, then that gap will not hold support and it'll, still, it'll move lower. But if the gap comes in, say, 100 million shares were traded last Friday, we come in 90 million, that, the chances are that gap's going to hold and we're going to try to bounce. And we're, well, we're going to bounce to whether there's a gap uh, down last Wednesday, and we may test that upper gap. So we may rally back there. Uh, so it's just kind of a mush market. I think we'll probably find support at last Friday's gap. It's a little bit too soon to say, but just looking at the volume, I don't think we'll reach last Friday's volume. And the market may take a, a run for the gap of last Wednesday. And last Wednesday's, if you look at that volume, it was pretty high. So I doubt we'll get through that last Wednesday's up last Wednesday's down gap, and that gap will probably be resistance, and we'll go back down again. Uh, so it's kind of a gobbledygook market, mm -hmm. and this is probably going to last for several more weeks of just back and forth, back and forth. So if you know the short-term rules of gaps, uh, you'll, you'll probably do fine. If you don't, you get chewed up in this market. But it's kind of a gobbledygook market. Uh, but anyhow, it looks like today we'll probably find support at gap, at gap but the only rally worthwhile is probably back up to 550 which will probably be resistance and we'll test that gap probably on 10 percent of higher volume and send the market back down again so the next decline maybe uh first part of august or mid-august we may start lining up for a buy signal if we back if we go back down to the bottom of that blue area which is uh, maybe 530 area on the spy so uh too soon to say yet but we're staying on the sidelines personally, so it's it's just too much noise here in the market. Um, we got time to cover the gold market? Absolutely we do, yeah. We have about two minutes, two and a half minutes till the break, and then obviously if we don't have enough time uh, right now in this segment, please stay for the last one, because I, I know a lot of the viewers here love hearing your input on the metals. I'm pulling up chart five right now. That is the GDX ADP. All right, yeah. This chart, this, this is a monthly chart, and it's kind of a repeat, but the only thing I want to show you, this chart, actually the weekly, uh, the bottom window is a cumulative up-down volume. The next higher window is a cumulative advanced decline. Top window is GDX. This is a monthly chart. The monthly charts gave a long-term buy signal. This is a multi, well, actually previous signals of this type lasted a year and a half, if not longer. So we got we got uh, triggered on May 31st of uh, this year. So we got a year and a half to go minimum uh, for the monthly charts uh, to run its course, and it may actually go longer. The weekly charts, same type of chart, but on a weekly time frame, gave a a buy signal on March 18th, and that the weeklies are on a buy, the monthlies are on a buy. But if you notice uh, the far right window there, uh, both these. Uh, Two bottom indicators are gaining ground. They're making higher highs, and actually uh, uh, compared to what it was a month ago. So internally, the market is actually getting stronger. Uh, so that's so this probably trend on the monthly charts of both these indicators, the up down volume and advanced decline indicators, probably over the next one and a half years, are probably in general be rising every month. Uh, similar to what happened back in 2019 and similar to have, uh, what happened back in 2016, which is the light green area. Uh, so I guess if you get long here, just, you know, if you're looking at the longer term, you can actually stay long. 
Uh, we can put the. Yeah, uh, we're we're, we're going to run out of time here. No, that's fine. Um, we just go into the next segment for sure. You know, and there's been a lot of right. like kind of sideways movement, at least with gold. I mean, today you're up 1.12%, which is pretty nice. Uh, but it'd be nice to see us kind of take off a little bit. But I hear what you're saying. You're just kind of hanging in there uh, if you're already in. Well, well, Tim, stay right there. We're going to go to a short commercial break and then have a nice little segment. We can wrap up the last chart. Hmm. All right, folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Moore. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup, filling for Tom and Brian. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. We have a short segment here, Tim, looking at that HUI uh, to gold the bugs index. Right. That's the middle chart. Uh, this is uh, the weekly chart, and I have a blue trend line coming from the 2000, uh, 2008 high all the way down to the current time frame. And I got a little circled in red. Uh, there we did break above that trend line that has long term implications because that trend line's you know what twenty years whatever it's it's a long trend line the longer the trend line, the more significant it has is it has so this is a significant event for gold stocks, so we'll probably have something similar going on what I think is probably like the two thousand low uh, uh another uh indicator that really helped at uh, intermediate term tops is I took a, the weekly RSI of that ratio and uh, I got red arrows on the top one of the HUI, weekly HUI, and every time the RSI got above 70, which is all those uh, uh, RSI of the weekly HEU gold ratio, you had some sort of a top of, of uh, you know, at least multi-week. And so I'm kind of watching this indicator. It won't be a, a top of any long term, but it could stall the market for several weeks, I'll put it that way, even a couple of months. But the RSI right now is 60 and needs to get above 70. So we may have that in September. So I think September could see a high, especially if the RSI of the weekly HUI ratio gets above 70. That may stall the market possibly into, you know, maybe February of next year or something. Won't be a final high, but it'll be a, a, a timeout and an uptrend is how I put it. So there's Long term, really bullish. Uh, short term, still bullish because the RSI hasn't reached 70 yet on this uh, weekly HUI ratio. So uh, I say you enjoy the ride. I think this, this rally, you got at least a year and a half to go, maybe longer. So, Fantastic. Tim. Have fun. Yeah. The great, great outlook on that. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to see you Thursday. So looking forward uh, to seeing what develops. Thank you for joining us, Tim. Right. Thank you. Folks, thanks so much for listening in today. If you are listening on YouTube, make sure to give us a like and subscribe if you're in the den. Thanks for being here. I hope you all have a great rest of your day.